Right, the first step to um, uh, resolve a method call is to find out which class or interface you have to search to find uh, details of the method and uh, this little example down here shows you uh, how it goes about doing that for various types of invocation. So let's start with the uh, simple invocation first, uh, which is actually a more difficult case. Um, okay, what it does is um, it looks uh, for um, any method called M in class B, and it ignores the signature altogether. And if B either um, declares a, a method called M or it inherits one, and it can inherit one from either a super class or a super interface, it doesn't make any difference, then the effect of that will be to uh, shadow any similar method called M, any method called M at all that's um, declared in this uh, static import. So we'll shadow all of them in there. So if it if that's the case, then if it um, uh, if it does declare or inherit a, a method called M in class B, then then uh, a static import stuff is ignored and the class to search is B. Otherwise, if it doesn't do that, then the thing to do is to search all the static imports. I've only got one there, but uh, there could potentially be other static imports as well. Okay, right, the next case is uh, straightforward. It um, simply looks in B. Uh, this is very obviously looks in the superclass of B, which in this case will be object. Uh, this is an error. It's an error because interfaces don't have static methods and uh, that's the way you call static method using the uh, class or interface name. So that will give an error. Here uh, is an interface uh, I there and uh, that will look in the search the interface for a method called M and uh, is just to uh, make things a bit more interesting is uh, uh, method which returns an array of interfaces and uh, that selects one of the elements in the array and uh, calls the method M on that, so uh, that will search I again. Uh, fairly obviously that search is A and so does that and that's just an array of type A so that search is A as well. Just to show you, you can have something a little bit more complex uh, is an anonymous array of type A that's created there. Take the fifth element and uh, that will uh, call method on that. So you search A. And um, of course, it does not matter, of course, that uh, there's only one element in here and you're looking at the fifth. Now, uh, that makes no difference at all. That's not the business of the compiler to complain about that. That's a, a runtime error. Okay, right, there's. Um, uh, one last uh, couple of points to make. Um, here's another use of the word super that I haven't discussed. Um, it's, uh, it's covered when we do nested classes and um, that just means that whatever that class name is you search the super class of it. Um, here's uh, um, something else to mention too. Um, all of these um, methods and so on down here can method names can have uh, what's called non wildcard type arguments in front of them uh, that doesn't affect anything the class you search is not affected by that um, we we'll deal with that when we do generics so just ignore that until until then and that's about it I think uh, this is uh, just a little uh, example I've made to uh, illustrate the uh, points I'm making. I've got two packages here um, and in this package one we've got uh, this class G which extends Z and there's a whole lot of methods called M declared in uh, G and in Z as well. And down in this package two we import static uh, M from G. So the question is what uh, what methods get imported and uh, the answer is all of those there 
plus the two inherited ones because the inherited ones are members of G just as much as the ones declared are. So those three there and those two get imported by that statement. And now if we look at uh, class W here we declare uh, method M there which means adding W and F extends W so straight away that M is a member of F and um, this call here will call that method there even though that uh, method up here in Z is uh, a, a better candidate in a way because it uh, matches much more closely nonetheless it's that method which will be called because that M being uh, inherited at this point here has um, shadowed every every method M that we've imported so at this point here all the methods M that we've imported have been shadowed by this method there so it's that one that's called and um, it does not matter what the signature of this method M is here any method M will have that effect so if this was um, didn't, uh, declared like that so it didn't take any parameters it would still nonetheless um, shadow every single method M there and the compiler will in fact give an error rather than resort to searching uh, through G or Z or no matter so the signature as I said is completely ignored at this initial phase you don't pay any attention to that until later now um, uh, what else can I say? Um, uh, if you want to uh, call this method up here, you can do, of course, um, if you give a fully qualified name. So that would have to be uh, 1.g.m uh, followed by that parameter list. That would call that up there. Um, obviously you can't put Z in because uh, it's a different package and uh, it's not public but because it's been in inherited it's available through G um, now of course uh, that's one way of doing it uh, you could also that was commented out com comment that out so that wasn't there then of course it would go to that as well right now having said all this um, uh, this is a bit uh, pathological. You're not supposed to use uh, import static like this. It's um, it's intended for libraries of uh, functions, uh, things like a, a library of trigonometric functions, for instance, where everybody knows what the name is. They're all different, and um, uh, there's no problem with overloading and stuff. Here, I'm I'm resorting to some something that's a bit pathological by overloading all these M's so this is not the way you're supposed to be using static import uh, it's just to illustrate the pathology